when it comes to these 401ks and some of these investment plans that we have, the policies provide that when you get of age and you want to make a purchase for, say, your first house, it allows you to use a portion of your investment plan as your down payment for your house without penalty. Mm. And that's critical. Okay, repeat that again, Jay. Because that's critical. If you, if you, so let's say you start investing, okay, uh -huh. early, uh, uh -huh. when you started working in your early 20s. And then by the time you are, say, 25, 26, say, 28, you decided that you're going to quit renting and own a home. Right. All right. Own, 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 uh, home, own, uh, home ownership is a, is a wealth creating strategy. So it is good that you transition from the rental stage to the home ownership stage. Definitely. So at that stage, what stops more people from owning a home is the down payment the and what they're going to own. There are programs, depending on which state you live and, and what bank you're associated with, where the state or the city might assist you. That is still not enough. You need to still come uh, with some money out of your pocket. Right. Now, if you've started investing before that time, Typically, investment returns are not supposed to be, or your investment proceeds are not allowed to be used until you retire. And so these are long-term investment. You're mm -hmm. supposed to put it away for 10, 20, 30 years and not pull it out. Right. However, the policy provides that if you're going to be a first-time home buyer, okay, that down payment of 40000 60000 or whatever that you need can be pulled from your 401k um, or your retirement without penalty because typically if you withdraw money from your funds you're hit with a 10 percent penalty some taxes and and a host of other things depending on the right. plan that you are in definitely. and it's not it's not funny it's not funny definitely now because the plan uh, the policy allows you to use a portion of that money for uh, the purchase of your first home i think there are two incentives right that you should equip your kids with to start investing first it will assist them. If you, as a parent, are unable to do that, it will assist them purchase their first home and move from a rental to a homeowner. So you create two streams of wealth. Right. You're, you're a homeowner, mm -hmm. and you're building equity in your home, and you have an investment where you're building for towards your retirement, and you can't go wrong with that. Definitely. So, you know, I mean, it's a it's a win-win situation. And that comes back to the very statement that you made, whereby you need to plan in order to not plan and not be able to be successful. So planning means there should be no failure, no failure can arise. So if you don't plan, that means you're planning to fail, in other mm -hmm. words. So you have said it clearly. So it brings me to another piece of it, which is kind of a little bit, it, 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 it's a little bit on the mm, sad side, but at the same time, it's a good piece. And that is the question I want to ask you about life and life insurance, because we have life, so we want to actually insure it and not insure it that we can extend it to say we're going to live longer, but at least <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. But however, life insurance is, a, is, a, is another crucial piece that goes with retirement. And, you know, earlier on, I, you know, I kind of said something about the spiritual retirement because like I said, it's inevitable. And we're talking about death here and life insurance also has some, as an, it's not just for the purpose of dying and the, the, the after um, responsibilities that is left on the family member who are still here and has to take care of that piece, but also life insurance from my understanding, which I've done a little bit of that too, can generate some uh, wealth there also and allow you to gain a little bit more money at the same time you kind of put yourself in a secure position to take care of the sad state that we will go through at some point in our life. So Mr. Jacob, talk to me about and talk to the guests about life insurance from your um, knowledge. So, so life, in, uh, life insurance is also a wealth creating strategy and I'll break it down. Now, uh, first, why do you need a life insurance? Uh, think about the for those who own vehicles or homes right mm -hmm. you do you do have insurance on your vehicles yeah. matter of fact it's you pay less mm -hmm. on your life insurance than you pay on your vehicles mm -hmm. so if you care so much about your car and you're able to eke out 150 dollars 200 dollars in some cases a month mm -hmm. to insure yeah. your car why don't you pay 50 dollars you know 75 dollars or 200 dollars for yourself 
you know, you right. are more valuable than your car. Yeah, your so car. that's the analogy I'll make, right? Yeah. We also pay thousands of dollars as insurance for our homes. For, our homes. for the 30 years that you have your mortgage, you're paying insurance and it's quite a bit. Definitely. So if you value your home and your a vehicle that much to pay insurance, why don't you pay a fraction of that for your own life? Now, granted that uh, most, most folks think that, well, if I'm do, paying for life insurance, it's for the benefits of my progeny or, or, the, uh, uh, or my spouse or the people that live around me. Mm-hmm. And so why bother? I'm dead anyway. So some people make those analogies. Right. And, and you may choose to say that. But think about this. Once you exit this world, somebody's got to bury you. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to either take care. If you care about all your children, they've got to advance from where you stopped. Now, I said life insurance is a world creation strategy in a sense that um, when you've built an empire or you have a little business or you have a home, uh, and let's say, for instance, your home has not been paid off and your life is taken accidentally, right? I'm pretty sure that it will be a wish that uh, for your spouse and your kids who happen to be in the house uh, that the mortgage keeps being paid or the house will be paid. And so by taking a life insurance, what it does is that it doesn't necessarily make you wealthy, but it makes you whole. It ensures that you don't lose that assets that you fought so hard to build. Definitely. And so the balance of your mortgage pay- payment, maybe 300000 whatever it is, will be, will, the life insurance will come in to pay off that. Yeah. Right? And that portion of that is that uh, you might have a plan to educate your kids, for instance, and so when you're not there, you don't want to bequeath that pain and, and, and suffering on them or some other folks to take up the mantle when you have a strategy today to have a life insurance so the proceeds of that life insurance will make sure that education is taken care of, right? And so it, it breaches the gap. Now, another, another way to approach life insurance is that uh, don't look at it from the point of view of just your progeny or your spouse um, uh, getting getting the proceeds. You can actually enjoy from your life insurance whilst you're alive. Right. And here's why. Uh, there are different strategies uh, that your life insurance professional will educate you on. You can have a life insurance where a portion of it goes into investments, right? And another portion goes into uh, uh, the actual life insurance, which is if something happens, is used. It kicks in the hills uh, and is used to pay you. Right. And, 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 and so that portion which goes into investment, right, grows. It grows to a point where it has enough returns to pay into your life insurance portion. So you no longer have to contribute after a certain age. The right. life insurance gets onto an autopilot. Okay. So if for nothing at all, get an appointment with a life insurance agent or your banker. And they will break this down for you and give you the knowledge that is necessary. I keep saying that knowledge is power. Uh, uh, and we also have what we call choice, right? The power of choice. Right. Use your power of choice to make a call to your financial advisor or your banker and let them give you that knowledge. And then you become the decision maker after you have an informed, uh, after you have the uh, information or the knowledge. So that way you make an informed choice. Right. And, and, and if you think it's not for you, that's okay. At least you have the knowledge. But do not say it's not okay. You're not going to do it if you do not give yourself the opportunity to learn something about it. Right. So, you know, I, I, I can say that I have been a beneficiary of a life insurance policy that I once held back in my, in my early, early prime um, as a young man, uh, for those who can remember a company called Mutual Life in Jamaica. They had a policy in the 80s for life insurance, which had an investment side to it. And within about, when I took that policy out, within about five years after having that policy, I was able to pull a nice sum from that investment side of that policy. And, you know, regrettably, if I, if, if I, if I could plan for the, 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 the other 30 years of my life ahead and held on to that policy, which I would have probably been very, I've been a very wealthy man today, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, we, you know, we were young and we, we didn't have all the, the tools available to us that we have now that these young folks have today with yeah. internet and information is so readily accessible. So yeah. whatever you hear, we discuss on this platform, you know, you don't have to take it 
for gospel. You can do some research yourself, but what we are telling you is nothing but the truth. You know what I'm saying? And back then, there's an old saying that it takes cash to care. So if you care about yourself, you can invest some of that little cash in yourself. And part of that brings you to getting that life insurance policy. Well, um, Mr. Vonderpoy, I'm going to go to my next question. And that is, you know, we are at the stage you now where we get to having some investments going and uh, we are just right about getting to the investment piece of our life where we can say, okay, finally, I'm going to look at my 401. I want to look at um, some shares or some stocks, but guess what? As the individual without proper knowledge, you know what I'm saying? I need, I need somebody to give, give me some guidance. guidance so, yeah. all right. So let me go back to you now in another, in a two part question. And that is to say, where do I get that help to manage the investment? And the second piece of it is, you know, when do I start the drawdown on that investment going into my retirement? Because now we get into the part where now we jump into the investment, we're going to need some help to navigate those territories because we, most of us are not financial um, advisors or we have financial management experience or accounting and business, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to definitely need some help. So I'm going to let you take this piece over and talk to us about the help on the investment piece. And then when, we, when it mature enough that we're getting into our time for retirement, when do we actually start to draw down on that piece? So Eliana, I had stated that retirement is different for different people. Uh, and so I'm going to go the academic route where um, an individual decides that they're going to approach their banker for them to help them invest. Now, there are folks who decide to do this on their own. And lately, there are a lot of uh, trading platforms like the Robin Hoods and, and so of this world. Uh, some of the uh, investment banks or some of the regular banks also have um, automated trading platforms. Uh, and so therefore, when you speak to an advisor, they will give you access to that and can do some of those trades. I must say though that those trading platforms like the, um, the Robin Hoods and stuff that you trade and buy stocks and stuff for yourself is nothing short of gambling. And I need to be, I need to be very honest with yourself because think about the financial advisors and financial planners who have studied the craft and uh, for years, for decades, they've honed their, tra their, their craft to be able to advise you. And you think that you can pick up your phone or your computer and read a couple of books and overnight become a trader and, and trade profitably. It, it, it's, it doesn't happen like that. All right. There are a few lucky people, but the amount of money that you put in your Robin Hood and other investment platforms that you trade yourself, options and all of those things, understand that that is gambling and you might win and lose. Lose, right. Know that that should not be your main investment strategy. So if you have, if you plan to retire at 65, have your planner or have a serious banker sit with you and then map that out. Now, you can have what we call disposable income, money that you can afford to lose, mm -hmm. all right? That money, you can invest in a trading platform to feed your, your gambling habit. That's okay. If it is more than that, you need to rethink your strategy because you might end up losing everything and has some intended unintended consequences. So that said, uh, when it comes to planning which investments to uh, uh, get into, a typically your advisor will take you through what we call a risk profiling, right? Each, mm -hmm. each and every one of us has an appetite for risk. Some of us are conservative by nature, which means that we cannot stand uh, stocks dropping and fluctuating, you know, wildly. We can't stand that. Right. Some are very uh, risk, high risk oriented, right? Some based on your age and your temperament and your lifestyle, you might have a high tolerance for risk. Others do not. What the advisor will do, take you through uh, a diagnostic process where they, they're able to ascertain your risk level. Right. Based on that risk level, they will place you at a certain, uh, they will put your investments in a type of stocks which align with your risk level. Oh. So if you're a conservative by nature, uh, you wanna, uh, they will probably put your funds in stocks which are conservative, let's say hospital stocks, for instance. Right. Uh, um, 
uh, alcoholic beverage stocks, for instance, okay. or these seasoned um, like auto industries, which uh, you know the 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 WalMarts of these world. These are right. stable industries. So you're uh, talking about stocks that are not aggressive. Yes. Right. Okay. And so if you're conservative, the the advisor might place you in those. If right. you if you have a high level of risk tolerance, mm -hmm. then you be put in probably the Googles and the Teslas and these fintech. You know these Software these stocks which fluctuates uh, wildly. Right. Some mm -hmm. of them have become stable though, but. Right. Uh, so, so, so to answer your question, the advisor is going to uh, diagnose your risk profile. Based mm -hmm. on your risk profile, they will decide on where to place you. Okay. And every year or every other year, you have what we call a revisiting of your risk profile mm -hmm. and a review of your portfolio to see uh, where you are. And if indeed you want to maintain it, that's fine. If you want to increase the risk because now you're accustomed to the fluctuations on the market more and everything. confident in your earnings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'll tweak it. Uh, right. So, so it, it is not an it is an exact science. I'll say that, mm -hmm. but it differs from one individual to the other because we have different motives in life and we go through different experiences, and so our outlook in life might change from year to year or. Right you know, every other year and your advisor is there to take you through that process. Right. You know, right. Uh, so that's on the, on the, on the, on the, on the stock side, there are folks who do not necessarily believe in doing all that. So they want to go to for the traditional investment, have some kind of a, a FDIC insured savings accounts or money market, you know, or just have regular CDs, which will not return them a lot. Uh, but for those folks, return on your investment is not what they are looking for. Or, they okay. probably have the funds. And so what they want to do is to preserve what they have. So right. to each their own. Okay. And so the advice that I say to you, if you don't have an appetite for uh, trading stocks, options, mm -hmm. and a host of all these derivatives, uh, mm -hmm. you might as well um, put it in safe uh, instruments like you know CDs and uh, you might have some bonds, uh, uh, you know, you know, municipal bonds or, you know, state bonds and stuff like that, which are pretty safe.